You guys coming? Okay. <laughs> All right, sweet. Um, so, Hikari will be available for more questions and things later, but we want to keep this kind of on target and moving forward and, and all that kind of good stuff. It's all wrapped up in apple goodness. Excellent. Um, we also, um, it's a very long distance between that projector and that projector, and we think we might have an issue with some one of the channels displaying to the other side. So um, please bear with us on the right side of the room. If you don't see, we'll continue to try to modulate. And if worse comes to worse, uh, Bob's going to get up and do some interpretive dance for everyone. So um, he does a really good Web 2.0 interpretive dance, but his end curses dance is really crappy. Um, so I also have a lot of swag here. People, people got end curses jokes. That's good. Um, Anyone actually own an FPGA and done any cracking with it? All right, that was the first hand I saw. This is an XL, and I'm not going to make any statement about your size, sir, so if you need to swap it, you can go to the front desk. This is one of the Shmukan, uh bat symbol shirts, so there you go. Uh, hey, I actually threw it to him. Um, other odds and ends. Um, is a I saw Adam Showstack here earlier, right? Adam's around? Yeah, okay, he's around. Oh, I saw a hand go up. Okay, good. So you can come up at the end. Of, when I get up here and I start hugging these guys, before I hump their leg, you need to come up and start plugging in your laptop. So, please. please. <laughs> so how do you pronounce your name? Uh, Owen. Yeah, Owen. Owen. Yeah. So the, the, Gaelic, sorry. the E is silent. Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. And neat. And you're Adair? Okay, Adair. All right, so this is Owen Miller and Adair Collins. I've been friends with them for years. Um, they were at my, you know, my son's birth. <laughs> But uh, they're going to talk about auditing cash credentials with Cash Jump, uh, which should be a fantastically interesting uh, talk. Um, and we do have two microphones, so feel free to uh, fire with both barrels, as it were. And you got uh, 20 minutes. I'm going to go take my, my kid to go back up and see my mom, though. So um, if I'm running late, y you're lucky, and you get some time, and I won't hump your leg. Okay. Right, yeah. cool, thank you. Well, uh, to go into the reason why we put together the presentation was one of the most common pathways to getting domain admin was uh, through dumping cash credentials, owning a normal workstation, and dumping cash credentials. And it just so happens that a, someone with domain admin privileges has logged into that box to do maintenance or to install software or whatnot. And the current uh, available options with Microsoft to deal with cash credentials really uh, isn't an ideal solution. So I guess we'll begin our presentation. All right. Uh, we're just going to go over, uh, oh, sorry, get this set up here. All right, uh, just what cache domain credentials are real quick. Um, basically, cache domain credentials are the encrypted username and password domain information that has uh, been used previously for authentication within a Windows domain. Um, they're stored in the registry in this location right here, uh, the end number, there's 10 of them by default. You can change that. We'll go over that a little bit later. And uh, basically, um, they're salted with MD4 hash rather than unsalted lan uh, landman and NTLM hashes that are t stored on uh, domain controllers and also local security databases. Um, the domain credentials are used for several things. Um, basically, uh, it allows you to uh, authenticate when a domain member is offline or your domain controllers are down. Or if a Samba server has taken over your domain and you've never noticed uh, and all the local Windows 2000 clients are still logging in, that happened to us, us at one point. But, um, and uh, it's necessary for roaming users with laptops because otherwise they have to have two logins in a in order to authenticate to their system if they don't have the network available to them, um, or if you just have machines with networking issues that you need to have offline in order to log in if you don't want to maintain a separate local security database. Um, and also it removes the overhead and management for local security databases from domain members. Um, why they're dangerous? Uh, basically, uh, especially with the domain admin privileged ones, um, as soon as you get, as, as soon as anyone gets them, if they crack them, they own every single NT device and anything else that authenticates based on that. Um, since so many things plug into this and it's such a vital part of many uh, internal uh, company infrastructure, um, it's really important to try and protect these as much as possible. Um, even having 90-day password uh, policies is generally not good enough uh, for, cause just because people always pick really simple stuff and admins as well. So. 
Um, they're all over your network and you cannot track them. Um, they're going to be on just about every single desktop, laptop that you can ever think of or any SQL servers or just member servers that you're thinking about in your domain. Um, also, uh, if somebody steals a disk or steals a system, it's going to be on there. You don't have to be sitting on a network waiting to see a uh, Kerberos pre-auth hash shoot across the wire to sniff and crack that. It's already just laying in wait, so uh, you're not... Sorry. Cockroach. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd been smelling some uh, DEET, like some off in the area all day today, and I think I know the reason why. Um, uh, <laughs> um, and also, all your users uh, generally have access to their own desktops unless you've went to some crazy blade solution. So uh, if you've ever logged into that box before or done any remote administration on that box uh, with a domain ad, uh, administrator credentials, then uh, you, that, that user might, might uh, immediately grab those crash credentials and cr start cracking and try and own the entire uh, NT domain. Um, and of course, they might have been on that lost or stolen laptop. All right, so, of course, this will scare you and you should say, oh, no. But um, Go over a little bit on how they're protected from attackers by default. Uh, only the system user has read-write access to the, to the security hive. Um, basically, uh, that's fine when you're booted inside of the operating system and you just have uh, even someone with administrator access. They don't necessarily uh, have the ability to do that, but they can just change it or use many tools, which start a service that then actually has read-write access to those keys. Um, also, uh, they're salt, uh, when, you, when they create these values to store in the registry, it's salted with the Unicode version of the, un of the uh, username and then encrypted with RC4 cipher as a randomly generated key value, encrypted again using DES and the LSA secret. Um, this has all really gone over, very, I'm not a big crypto guy, uh, the uh, cache dump readme.txt really goes over this very, very well. Um, if you can just go grab a copy of that and zip file and look through it, it has great uh, write-ups and research that was done on it. Um, and here we have some scenarios that uh, lead to the domain ad, uh, admin credentials being cached. Um, Many of these are just common administrative tasks, such as a domain admin logs into a domain member to fix a software or permissions issue. Um, domain management uses the run as function to execute a program. So even if you are properly not logging into systems left and right all over your network, um, and then using the run as functionality in Windows 2000 and above, it's, it, when you do that, it invokes the win logon process, which will then create a stored cached value on the system. So. Uh, that's just something to be aware of. Um, also, if you RDP into a system to fix anything, it's caching it at that point as well. And uh, also, this is actually one that's very specific to a uh, assessment that Adair had done, um, where there was a machine called uh, Administrator Shared Laptop, <laughs> yeah, I believe. Shared Admin Laptop. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, that popped out on the network neighborhood, so that was the first target. Um, it was easily exploitable, and it had cache credentials for all the domain admins, members of the domain admin group. And, and how long did it take to own that whole network? Uh, yeah, that was about a 15-minute assessment. It, no <laughs> tools, <laughs> yeah. no, no tools, no scanning, uh, nothing in a conference room with one of their public computers that were for use in, inside of that, if I remember right. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was fun. Um, we'll just talk about how the cache credentials can be obtained and cracked. Um, tools for this, such as cache dump, um, we uh, noticed during the course of writing this presentation, it is, no, it is uh, said on the site that it's no longer part of public domain. Um, I don't really know what happened too much, uh, but if you go to lots of security websites that archives this stuff, uh, my personal favorite is going to be packetstormsecurity.org. Um, they have all the, all the versions of it up there. Um, I don't know why exactly. Um, there, it was previously published under GNU licensing and everything, so. Um, but also FG dump, which actually I believe uses cache dump code and cane enable, um, which is pretty much everyone's favorite tool for this type of stuff. Um, you can also uh, use John the Ripper to crack. Um, you have to go grab a specific uh, source patch and compile it with that in order to do it, or you can just use cane enable. Um, either or will work just fine. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what you can do to hopefully stop this. Um, you can disable booting from other uh, media 
and set a BIOS password on all systems. Of course, this doesn't stop anyone from pulling the drive out and mounting it and pulling everything out. Um, there's also a Linux bootable distro that uh, does that you can do this with where you can just dump it all and you never have to enter in, into the Windows operating system um, and run any of the cache dump tools or anything like that. So it's you can do it pretty much completely undetected. Um, and also, a big one, ensure no users have local administrative privileges on their desktops and laptops. It's not new news, but, you know, it, it never happens, and it always leads to these types of uh, situations. Um, implement the practice of least privilege. Uh, there's no reason that anyone should really be using domain admin access on a Windows network pretty much ever. Um, if you create your OUs specifically in Active Directory and assign users uh, group ownership of those OUs and those machines within there, um, they only have access to that. They don't have access to absolutely every system inside of Active Directory. Um, it's a really good idea to do this. Uh, Microsoft goes over it in their best practices and uh, stuff like that. Um, so that's another good thing to do. And also, uh, to you can disable or limit the number of cache logins through the, uh, in the registry through group policy. Um, that really isn't a very graceful way to do it, but it's it's currently the best that is available. Um, so that's why is the above foolproof or, pac or practical? Not a chance. So. Um, how do you use uh, cache dump to audit them? Uh, this is what we did. We just created a little VB script that executes uh, through gr a group policy setting during startup and shutdown of all domain members. And uh, it takes the verbose output of cache dump and cleans out the uh, username values. And then it goes ahead and looks that up in Active Directory and enumerates the group membership. And then based upon the group membership, it compares it against the list within the script and then decides whether or not to remove the credential if the, the group membership matches. So even if you have like customized administrative groups or anything like that, it can just go ahead and pull the uh, value out of the registry and set it back to the default value. Um, are there any issues with this solution that we've engineered? Absolutely. Um, cache dump must be uh, accessible via network share or on the local system. Um, it must be run under the context of the system user. This means that you cannot have it set up to run as a login script. It has to pretty much run um, uh, unless you want to give everyone local admin privilege, which obviously is not a good idea. Um, and uh, so it just has to be run under the context of the system user. The only time a script is executed under the context of the system user is during boot up or shutdown of the system. Um, and uh, antivirus software will generally identify cache dump as a hacking utility. So unless you have, uh, you know, centralized management of all your antivirus stuff, this probably isn't for you. Um, the solution is reactive and also cannot resolve the root cause of cache credential creation and storage. So pretty much without uh, uh, any uh, input from Microsoft and changing hopefully how they do things, um, you, there's really no really good way to get around this. Um, the perfect world solution, uh, update the group policy and win logon process functionality in the following ways. Um, the win logon process to enumerate the group membership users as they log in and then to decide to cache or not cache the credentials of a user based upon group membership rather than specify a number of cache credentials to store on the system. Um, this, it, it would be absolutely perfect and you would never have to worry about this issue uh, coming about pretty much if you did this. There's also a, a bunch of other ways uh, if you use different types of authentication mechanisms like RSA Secure ID and stuff like that, but we're just looking more for just how uh, the current system could be made better instead of throwing other third-party uh, solutions on top of it. Um, what about Windows Vista? Will this work with it? Um, at the time of testing, which was probably two days ago, uh, cache dump didn't work with Windows Vista. Um, I was using version 1.1 because 1 1.2 was the latest, but it got pulled, and that was the one I had when I was writing uh, this presentation with Adair. Um, so if you know the contrary, I don't see any schmooballs flying at me yet, so I, I guess I'm right so far. Uh, the uh, cache credentials are stored in the registry in the exact same format uh, as previous versions of Windows, however, uh, with Windows Vista. So it, um, it, and it still does the exact same number, so I'm pretty sure it's only going to be a matter of time before someone writes a tool to dump the cache credentials on a Windows Vista box, um, at least for domain. I go a little bit over what happened to cache dump. Probably talked about this a couple times already. Um, no longer in public domain. It was previously pr produced under GNU. 
and uh, source code and compiled binaries still available at packetstormsecurity.org. Um, we also have a demo coming that we just set up real quick. Um, let's see here. Uh, the demo is going to show some of the, like, as we um, do pen testing for customers, we usually have to come up with some sort of remediation. And the last customer that were able to own their Windows domain in, in a couple minutes there, they were like, well, what's the solution? Um, their, their network was, question? Well, the uh, Laman hashes can be cracked via rainbow tables, so that's pretty trivial. But uh, it actually takes quite a lot longer to crack uh, a cache, uh, cr cache credentials using John or Kane. Um, I can't really say that uh, I know by heart any of the 10 character passwords that were cracked. Most of the stuff that uh, we came across is pretty trivial. Like um, one password was the guy's son name. His, his son's name with some, you know, variations for ones for eyes and such. You know, it's like a six-character password cracked in like a day and a half. Uh, yeah, well, you definitely slow it down. The m more complex the password, the longer it's going to take the crack. Uh, I don't know of uh, any rainbow tables for cash dump credentials yet. They are coming out. Uh, FreeRainbowTables.com is working on rainbow tables <coughs> for cash However, because they're hacked with usernames, yeah. they actually have to be custom generated. However, administrator typically works pretty good, so they're working on coming out with that. That's, that's fantastic. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I do think it is hashed with also the domain name and the username together as a string, like username at domain dot local. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think so. I'm sorry. Uh, the question was. Um, uh, someone mentioned that they're coming out with uh, rainbow tables for cache credentials, um, and the tables are going to be generated, I guess, using common uh, usernames. And Owen's response was is that the, pa the password hash is also generated using the domain name as well. Oh, the registry key to be read only was the yeah. question. What happens to run as and RDP log on if that registry key is read only? <laughs> That's yeah. something we haven't tried. But, uh, it, uh, the question was if we change the registry key where uh, the uh, cache credentials are saved, what happens? Um, you can disable the caching of all of them uh, through the uh, through group policy or there's a registry tweak to state the number and if you do that it won't cache any of them but then you're in the situation that if it's like a laptop or if your domain controllers aren't available then you can't authenticate against uh, you can't authenticate against any cache credentials because they don't exist so it, it, it puts you in it reduces the uh, usability and availability of the system so the PS tools uh, when used against a remote system, result in cache credentials? Um, uh, if it relies on the win logon process and does any sort of uh, authentication against the domain, then I, I would assume that it does. If, uh, I guess the question was if PS Tools is, ever, is, uh, is used uh, for authentication, does that create uh, an instance of a cache credential? Sorry. Yeah, well, writing up, um, trying to provide our customer with a remediation for this, uh, some of the admins were like, well, we use run as, you know, that shouldn't be caching it. And then we found that it does indeed cache it. And then the issue of RDPing into systems came up, and we found that, yes, it also gets cached via RDP, and it also gets cached using tools like popular admin tools like Dameware as well. So anything that calls the win login process will result in a cache credential. Okay. Um, in the just a quick example or demo here, uh, basically um, just created a new uh, policy in uh, G, uh, a new uh, group policy object, and uh, just put a copy of cache dump and also the audit cache credentials Visual Basic script that we wrote real quick. Um, let's see here. Sorry. And 
I don't know how many v VBS guys we got in here, but uh, basically um, this is all it does. It just goes through and parses the output. Um, then there's some funky stuff uh, only with uh, group membership here. You can see um, the, prim uh, the primary group ID stuff in Active Directory. Uh, if you're a user of, if you're a member of like just the domain users group, it's like a built-in primary group ID, so it doesn't resolve it out as that. It'll actually just say none, so you have to make a specific query, and it puts back a number, and then you need to parse it. Um, so we just do that just to make the output a little easier for our demo purposes. And then here is the like blank cached value uh, default array um, that you set the uh, thing to. It's it looks like it's all zeros, but there's like a four and like a ten in there for like or a four and a one in there for like no reason. So I don't know exactly what that is, but um, and we'll just show you how it works real quick. Um, basically, uh, this current uh, user. Let's see, or if you just want to talk about what I'm doing. Uh, sh so we um, built a couple of VMwares, um, domain controller, and uh, workstation, and we're just going to demonstrate uh, a user logging in, his credentials being cached, um, someone using the run as function and the credentials being cached. Um, so, uh, anyone have time? How much more time do we have? Are you still writing your presentation? No, no. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to hump their left. Oh, no, no, no. That's me, man. Come on. So, basically, we just I uh, just logged into the system, uh, authenticating against the local security database. As you can see, there is one cache domain credential for just a uh, a regular user level user that I just called user one, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and log back out and then log in as a uh, administrative user on the domain and show you that it creates the cache credential. As you can see there, now that it has the copy of the admin one user, and I'm just going to go ahead and reboot the system, and the script's going to execute. Um, it takes uh, about like 20 seconds after Windows is finished booting for it to finish working, so there's just going to be a little bit of delay before you actually see the pop-up. You want to count with us while we count yeah. down to 20? <laughs> Bring a timer next time. <laughs> Watches were invented a few years ago. So essentially the primary use of the script is to go and clean up cached credentials within your domain. Uh, so once you have your uh, OU set up with your accounts that you'll use for just workstation maintenance, uh, you can uh, go ahead and use this script to clean up all your workstations so you don't have any domain admin cached credentials out there. Can I share that with them? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So he just confided that he, he and, and I'm sharing this all with you, that he finished writing this code this morning on the Metro. Oh, no, it's been written for a while. I oh, oh, it's been written for a while. I'm sorry. I, I, I had to rebuild my VMs. Cause I'm oh, he had to rebuild the, the VMs this morning on the Metro. That's better than Adam, who's still writing his presentation, Frank. Himself, so. <laughs> there we go. See? There you go. All right. So uh, if you want to talk about what's here, like, that's the first user that comes up. And, uh, so, so essentially, the script's going through, and it's... Uh, enumerating uh, group membership and it's seeing that user one is not a member of the domain admin group so it's going to leave its cash credentials alone yeah. yes. and it's uh, so that's that one's domain admin false so here's the next user that's admin one and it enumerates a member of domain users also a member of domain admins and then uh, so yes it's true cache entry is being deleted so I'm gonna log in now show you that the cache entry is actually gone after the reboot if I quit hitting control, I'll delete. Oh, sorry. It's on purpose. <laughs> and 
and there you have it. Your domain admin cache entry is no longer on the system after the reboot, so even if someone comes across the system later, they can't dump it and try and crack it and try and own your entire domain. And I guess that's our presentation. If there's any further questions or if we're good we're on time. time. All right, well, we're out of time, so <laughs> thank, thank you, guys. You. Adam, I'm re reserving the leg humping for you. <laughs> all right, a couple of notes. Um, first of all, so this is a big wide room, um, and also behind the air wall um, is still part of the big wide room. So I encourage the people behind the air wall to take your conversations outside. Thank you. Um, yay, there's a few people I know that were wanting that to happen. So anyway, and if you can kind of keep the uh, side conversation.